it's no fun when our kids are sick, but we may just have found the silver lining. Apple and raspberry and orange flavoured electrolyte slushies made by Rehydrate. Rehydrate slushies are a tasty way to get essential electrolytes into our little ones when they're dehydrated from sickness or even just the Aussie heat. They're delicious and they'll help your little ones feel better in no time. Grab Rehydrate from Coles today. This is the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. My name's Susie. I've got Luke with me as well here today. And today we're addressing a question that came through to our radio show about how to deal with bickering kids. Let's get into it. Let's ask this question, a question that came through to the show, Justin, said, how do I stop the kids bickering with each other and learning better communication with their siblings? (laughs) So uh, this is the question that was asked. My first question is, is this a big deal? Uh, Well, sometimes it is. It depends on the bickering. I mean, everybody bickers, everybody niggles and gets on somebody else's nerves. Susie. (laughs) Sorry, did I say that out loud? I didn't realise. Okay, cool. Uh, What we're really talking about is poor communication. Uh, Mm. People not having the maturity or the capacity to regulate themselves and communicate um, maturely, Susie. (laughs) (laughs) But when our child is, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, should we expect them to communicate maturely? Uh, No, but we should teach them and guide them and help them because... They actually want to. You know, like our kids want to get this right. They don't actually like, contrary to what you might think, they don't like book bickering with one another. They don't wake up in the morning and think, today is the day I'm going to get my brother back. Yeah. Today is the day I'm going to call him all those names when mum's not listening and then I'm going to get him in trouble because he's going to beat me up and I'm going to win. That's, that's not what they wake up thinking. They almost always want to be in great relationships with their siblings and with us. Mm. Uh, but they just don't have the skills. They don't have the maturity. They don't have the capacity to regulate their emotions. They don't know the things to say when they're stuck and having a hard time, other than what they're taught at school. Mm. School does a better job often than parents of teaching. And, and what school usually teaches them to say is, stop it, I don't like it. Yes. And you know what the big brother or the big sister says when the little one says that to them? Stop it, I don't like yeah. it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they. I mean, they just yeah, they make it worse. True. So it's not um, particularly effective. That's, My- that's what Susie says to me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, is the goal to stop the bickering then? Uh, eventually, it is. But the goal is perhaps less about stopping the bickering and more about teaching effective ways to express what we're feeling. We're not going to stop a seven-year-old or a nine-year-old or even, let's face it, a twenty-four-year-old from bickering from time to time. That's going to happen. What matters more is helping them to communicate effectively in times of stress or distress uh, and helping them to say to another person that they're not comfortable with what's going on and something needs to change Yeah, okay. in a way that doesn't inflame things. All right, so we've got the problem covered. There's bickering happening and there's bickering happening because there's not good communication skills. How to develop good communication skills is what we're going to discuss. Solved. Seems like a pipe dream when we've got three boys within two years of each other. They, um, they, they, they were mastering the bickering and uh, the poor communication, but you're going to give us the tips on how to actually teach them to get better at this. Right, and I've, I've lived through having six daughters who have given me plenty of opportunity to practice this, right? <laughs> okay, great, great. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think the first thing to say is that example is crucial here. Now, I recognise that when I say something like this, a lot of parents are going to hang their heads in shame. I'm not about parent shaming. Uh, I know that every parent is doing the best that they can. Uh, Recently, though, I had an experience that kind of highlights just how important it is that we get our example right. I'd flown into Melbourne. I was standing at the baggage carousel at Tullamarine, and I overheard a mum standing about four metres away from me, and she was really laying into her two kids, two daughters, probably aged somewhere around 11 and 7 giving them heaps, it was it was uncomfortable. Now, she was frazzled. They'd been on airplanes. We don't know the context, but never, it's enough to say that the people around me were all exchanging glances. Their eyes were looking at her and then darting towards the floor. It was, mm. it was rough. And this mum, I, I guess, was in a, a pattern of communicating poorly with her kids, and they're going to learn that. As an aside, I actually walked over to her once I had my bags. I opened up one of my boxes of books. And, and I, I said to her, it's really hard traveling with kids, isn't it? And she looked at me like she was going to tear my head off. Uh, I said, I understand how it feels because I've just come back from a holiday myself and I've got six daughters. I get it. It's really rough. And she sort of melted a little bit. 
I said, this is a bit um, random, I know, but um, and I've never done this before, but, but I, I write books about parenting and I'm on my way to Geelong to do a parenting seminar. Um, can I offer you one of my books? Can I just give this to you? It's about making our families happier. It, it may, it's not a judgy thing, but based on the afternoon you're having, this might just lift you a little bit. And she said, thank you. She actually emailed me a few days later and said, I think that you've just changed my life. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Oh. It's risky. But I, that, that's the aside. The yeah. point is, as parents, how do we respond when somebody is bickering? How do we respond when somebody is agitating us? Example is everything. Not about shaming us. It's about saying, let's have a good look at ourselves. And if you feel a little pang of guilt right now, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Mm. Because it indicates to you that if you can change, maybe your kids can as yeah, well. Yeah, that's great. I reckon the next thing that we've got to remember is that high emotions equals low intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've you've de- de- delivered this to us before and every time I go, yes, it does. <laughs> I think about every moment where the emotions have been high and I haven't said the smartest things. Right, right, right. So while I'm not an advocate of timeout, a couple of things about timeout. First of all, the research shows that when it's appropriately administered, it does get results. Yeah. Nevertheless, I've got a lot of uh, philosophical and ideological reasons for not liking it. First of which is that most people don't do it properly. And number two, there's kind of ways. Nevertheless, if we all need to have some time away from each other to calm down so that we can talk intelligently and kindly to one another and stop the bickering, then I think that some form of time out or time in or some form of separation that's done in a, in a gentle and kind way is going to be helpful. The next thing I think that can be really helpful is just asking your kids a simple question. How else could you have said that so that it didn't upset people? Mm. Yeah. Just asking that question, getting them to do the problem solving once they're calm. When we say to them, how else could you have said that? Most of the time they're going to shrug their shoulders and go, I don't know. Yes. Because that's what kids say. Yeah. You say. Well, I know that you don't know, but if you did know, how else could you have said that? I don't know. <laughs> I just said I don't know. I know, but if you did know. And eventually you want to work with them to come up with a – a nicer way to say to their sibling, what, you did, what you're doing is upsetting me or can you please stop that or uh, would you like me to leave the room so that you can pl- play the piano and I can play the violin or you know, mm. in, in different mm. places, what, what, whatever it is. Not that we're all, you know, getting the orchestra going in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, the, the key, if, if we can get this right, is that if we are soft and we can teach them better questions to ask, better ways to interact – what happens is we can then facilitate better experiences together. Uh, bickering will never stop it. Bickering does lead to change. It's sometimes necessary so that people recognise that they're being inconsiderate and disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, but there are better and worse ways to get that message across. Mm. Our job as parents is to teach our children to get the message across well, and the best way we can do that is by getting the message across well ourselves. Great. Wonderful answer to the so question that's coming to the show. and uh, I have had a few pangs through that. But yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. all right. I'm going to be okay, well, everybody. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> I, I didn't want to highlight those points to you, Suze, but I'm glad you picked them up. That's good. Dr. Justin Coulson, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Thanks, guys. <laughs> for more details, you can go to happyfamilies.com.au or if you're interested in having Dr. Justin Coulson come and speak at your school or your corporate event, find out more at justincoulson.com.